Last Sunday morning, a dear friend was sitting at the bedside of her 94-year-old mother, who had been trying to die for almost a week. But as we commented, you don't get to be 94 by being a weenie. It was taking a while. Ancient Vivian had not spoken in at least two days, but unexpectedly she opened her eyes and said, did you hear that? Someone's knocking at the door. And then she closed her eyes again, drifting off to wherever she had been. There was no one at the door. But Vivian died a short day later because, in fact, for her, someone had been knocking, and she opened the door to the one who had so quietly come for her after 94 years. Is that how life ends? with the knock of a friend on the door. On Wednesday morning, my phone burst with text messages as rapid as machine gun fire. It was my sister's group text message exploding with news of the most recent fall. Matt Lauer, question mark, question mark, question mark. You're kidding, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. What did he do? Many emojis. I had to mute my phone if I was going to get any work done at all. Mr. Lauer and so many others like him will be remembered now not for great work or good deeds, but for imagining they could do anything to anyone at any time, in any place, without consequence. Is that how a career ends? in a firestorm of shame with a door slammed? Endings can be very hard. We are much more comfortable with beginnings. On Thursday afternoon, I got to hold a brand new baby. His name is Nathaniel. His dad is here today. He's beautiful, Aaron. Little Nathaniel was like a furnace in my arms. He is but a beginning, a promise of a future that only God knows. In our scripture readings, in coming weeks, we will hear news of another infant. And though Jesus was the mother of all unplanned pregnancies, his birth became a gift to his startled parents and to the whole universe. This morning marks the beginning of a new church year and a new primary gospel. Mark, did you notice the new color of my gospel book? You'll be seeing this for a year. We will read this year about Mark's understanding of Jesus' life and ministry. Today, we would rather do beginnings, new babies, new stories. We would be happy with warm puppies or first kisses or new cars, as happened to us recently. But we know that every beginning has an inevitable end. A knock on the door, a shameful secret exposed, or in Advent's case, the end of all that we know. This Advent, the year of Mark, we begin at the end. Jumping into Mark's gospel at the 13th chapter is a little like starting Game of Thrones in season six. Brienne of Tarth and Jon Snow and the Wildlings, what? But it didn't take a rocket scientist to recognize that the political and religious situation in first century Jerusalem was unsustainable. There were enemies outside its borders and enemies within. Powerful people used their power for their own gain and not for the good of the people. Some people operated covertly and some people without shame, creating and doing horrible things, making terrible decisions that benefited them, but perhaps 
no one else. Though those enemies were chipping away at Jerusalem's stability every day, there was one thing they could do, a surefire way to bring the whole city and all its people to its knees. And that one surefire method, destroy the temple, take it apart, brick by brick. And Jesus knew that it was going to happen. It had happened once before. Taking down the temple was the original nuclear option. You see, the temple in Jerusalem was more than a beloved church building. As much as we love this building and are about to spend a ton of money on it, thank you very much, if it burned to the ground, we would be very sad. But we would call the insurance company and we would build something new. The temple in Jerusalem was more than just a beautiful building. It was the home for God. They believed that God lived there in the holiest of places. It was their identity as a people, and people came to the temple every year at least once on a pilgrimage to be near God. If you wanted to destroy Jerusalem, if you wanted to destroy the Jews, torch the temple. Jesus was that rocket scientist. He knew that the end was coming. The end of the city, the end of the temple, perhaps the end of his people, and most certainly the end of his ministry. When would this happen? Jesus himself says, don't know. The Father knows, but I don't. How will it happen? That's a more interesting question. And Jesus hints at a number of options. At the beginning of the text, he is speaking sideways about the destruction of the temple. And he says that the end of their world will come with stars falling and the earth quaking beneath their feet with angels and winds and a mighty return. Watch for it. But then he says, you know, the end might come as quietly as a fig leaf unfurls on a tree in the spring. You know what's going to happen when you see that bud. And you also know that every spring begs a fall. So just pay attention. Or it might come delightfully, as when a traveler long gone comes home and knocks. Open the door. He's here. Or, to use an example ripped from the headlines, the end may come for some with a final horrible judgment. I saw what you did. This year, Advent begins at the end. At the end of my friend Vivian's life. At the end of famous people's reputations at the end of Jesus' world. And Advent will end at the beginning with news of an unexpected birth. But we have to wait. Instead, we begin today at the end. <laughs>